I saw this post on Instagram that said like 22 to 24 is the loneliest age. You know, 20, well, so you're 24. Yeah, okay, no, we're 23. literally running to, Don't Oh, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Dyslexic. Anyways, um, <laughs> 22 and 23 is such a weird number. Like, I was just talking about this, which is so funny because obviously I know we're so young for what we're doing and blah, blah, blah. And all my friends are 30, so don't worry, I hear about 30s all the time. But... You're like 22, there's, right? Yeah, there's just not... I'm turning 23 in April, and there's nothing I'm looking forward to about being 23. Really? It's just such an odd number. No, it is so weird, because at least 21, you're like, okay, I can go out 21, now. 21, it's exciting. Yeah. 22, Taylor Swift. Just kidding. But I saw this post, it was like, by the time you're 23, your life's like pretty much over. I, I know it was just rage baiting, but I was like, oh my god, well, I, I don't know. I also wonder in like a normal person's life, like... Okay, what is the age period where you're, like, finding yourself and, like, learning the most about yourself? I mean, that's probably an ongoing process throughout your 20s, but people always say, like, oh, your mid-20s are for that or something. I don't know. I feel like this process, I hear it called the loneliest because a lot of people, they've just gone out of college or, yeah, you know, and they're, like, discovering they that's don't like going out that much. That's and true. You've... The yeah. college is like the honeymoon phase of being of of new, yeah, newly becoming an adult. And then you have to figure out, no, that's so true. I do think that's, but Even it's, if you don't go to college, that like period is like, you're excited about being an adult. You're like excited by things. You get to like do things for the first time. Do you feel like you're pretty lonely in general or how do you deal with being lonesome? I think it's gone better. Well, this is why you live with us now, well, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I know, it is nice. But, like, I definitely periods where I'm alone, it's kind of tough. Having a routine helps, but, like, living alone isn't always the most fun thing. And when I get really lonely, I usually like, turn to, wait. like, romance, which is not good. That's the worst way that the lonesome habits for me kind of came into fruition. But you've lived with, like, you were just living on someone's couch for a couple months. Mm -hmm. You've been living with people, right? I have, but... Then it's like family for a little bit, and then my mm. my family was traveling, so I was different. alone. Yeah. Um. But no. yeah, and also even when I was living on that person's couch, like he was traveling a lot for his work. So. Gotcha. I think living yeah. alone is so hard. And when my sister and I first moved to LA, we moved into a content house, and despite our roommates being pretty crazy, <laughs> um, and like always having random people, and it was so chaotic, I was so happy because. I never really felt alone and there was always noise in the house and it was so hard for me to move out of it because my sister, I think like the times that I did the most self progress, but it was also like darkest periods of my life is when I had to just live alone for a couple of months because Alex was playing poker tournaments. Um, and I mean, I also had a lot of anxiety about being alone and whatnot from stalker situations. Um, but it was probably like the most pivotal, but I feel like this, I just want to have roommates for a couple years and that's my solution, but it's hard to find roommates all the time. Yeah. And I guess there is a period of self growth from being lonely, but I think when you're in like this age period, roommates are the number one socializing factor. I agree. Cause you get to see someone and also you yeah. meet their friends and they yeah. you go out when you're alone. It's like, who goes to the bar uh, alone unless you're a little bit, having, you know. Having roommates is really nice. And Oh, Alex and I always knew we wanted a roommate, but the truth is you are your environment and it's really hard to find, like, especially for us because we're so picky and whatever. And we want someone who, like, keeps us productive, but it's still fun because, like, you have the fun roommate, but then they're, like, too fun. And you're like, OK, a little concerned. And then you have, like, workaholic, but antisocial doesn't, like, doesn't want to go out. Like, I've had both ends of the spectrum, so it's just also hard to find, um, which, yeah. Any type of, and also you have to be compatible living together, like yeah. messiness levels, being able yeah. to like, what do you want to do? But okay, so you said loneliness when it comes to men. I've, this is probably the thing that I've thought about most, um, but I want to first hear your perspective on that. Yeah, when I get like very lonely, I think my brain automatically goes to like romance as the thing that can fix it. You know, you're like, oh, yes. if only like exactly. I had that person, blah, blah, blah. Do you do that thing where you instantly send a text because you're feeling lonely and you get someone's <laughs> company and then you get it and then you instantly regret it because yes. you signed up for something you didn't actually want? That's... Um, yeah, or like sending a text. I'm like, wow, this is not not good. <laughs> like my most toxic habit is that and I hate it because okay, it's called love bombing. Um, and I wasn't even aware of it. And also it depends because you're in the honeymoon phase. But sometimes it's like as soon as the sun goes down, I get depressed because I'm like, shit, it's not even though then I, I get a second wave of energy later. Um, but especially on Adderall meds and whatnot. 
And when I get in that, I'm like down for like 30 minutes. I'm like, oh my God, I need human company to make me feel better. I'll immediately text the boy who I'm not really that interested in, but I just want their company who feel strongly and then be like, oh, I miss you, I wanna see you. And that's when I'll be like, Aww. I'll plan a trip with them, or not a trip, but like plan an activity with them. Mm -hmm. And in the moment, I get so much joy and then I can't cancel later because obviously it's fucked up. And then I find myself in that activity and I regret it. And that's my most toxic habit. I think that that makes a lot of sense though. Uh, and it is hard to like be alone and to feel bad thoughts. Like immediately when we you feel bad, you want it. something to. Yes. To stop you but sometimes you have to like let yourself be lonely and to not letting to yourself be lonely is something i have mixed feelings about because hmm. sometimes when i get my alone time um and i actually am not working i'm really happy but there's also so many times when people have told me like it's good to take time for yourself and i do it, and i still hate it which i think overall i just like being around people so there's probably a balance with both I guess so. Okay, besides roommates, how do you make your friends in your 22, 23, 24, or early 20s, whatever? Oh, God. Well, I feel like I have the most untraditional standpoint because it's something I'm really bad at. And I honestly, like all the friends I met were people, I don't want to say through work, but like technically I met them all throughout work. Everyone's 10 years older than me. Um, everyone's kind of in this industry. Although I love making thing friends spontaneously like music's really cool because i can connect with people over something otherwise than work which in the past literally would never happen hence why all my friends were also creators and i realized like some of my closest friends are people who are not creators um but it was just hard for me to meet it because like meet them because i was streaming all the time i'm not really going out so it's hard to meet people but i feel like this is not traditional maybe it is though like it's interesting hearing you say about this because I, I would like look at your Instagram and it would seem like, and like looks, you have friends. Like, that's you the go thing out about LA time. though. Like LA, you meet so many people. You're with people all the time, but you, it, when I was going out the most, partying the most, I had never felt more alone. Yeah. And I, so many people in LA experience this as well. It's interesting. I think it's especially when you feel like you have to put on a facade or like yes. some sort of image. Yeah. And I you mean, can't be yourself. Most people you're not going to connect with more than surface level by going out. And like the truth is like when you want to get close to people, you really have to put in the effort to make plans with them. And it's a lot of effort and it takes a lot of time to build those relationships. And when you first come to L.A., you're like, I don't need to do that because like, there's something every other weekend. I'm just going to go to all this stuff. But you never go deeper with one person. It's just always like seeing people in the same surface level events. Does that make you feel more lonely, only seeing like people surface level? It definitely did. And I was really glad I had my sister because we would talk about it and be like, why does LA feel like a soul sucking succubus? And like, you see this also in so many guys in LA who are older guys who are now like 30 something. They got famous 10 years ago and they are at every party, and they're also the same person texting you what you do in every hour, and they're getting invited to these really cool parties. They're hanging out with, whatever, big celebrities, but I don't genuinely, like, don't think they have any real friends, and it's so sad, and they've done it for 10 years, and I think it's just really easy to fall into that cycle in LA. No, I could see it, because it's hard also to find people who want those, like, of meaningful course. friendships. That's the hardest part, finding people you actually want to connect with. It, I haven't been here for long, but it does feel yeah. a little transactional. LA is so, again, it took us, my sister and I, like two years to even find a couple close friends we really liked here because LA is really spread out. So you're more True. isolated. Like yeah. in small towns, you bond over being in a small town. In New York, people are more ambitious and more extroverted. But in LA, like everything is 20, 30 minutes driving. And a lot of people here have been here so long, they already have their cliques and their circle and they're not really looking for new experiences. I mean, new friendships. And that was like the thing I found hardest to accept. Um, and it's really just like spontaneously, you'll come across those people through like the most random unexpected stuff. And that's usually how I meet my closest friends. There is like a kind of environment in each city about how you meet people. Like yeah. I know in San Francisco, bouldering is so huge, like rock yeah. and bouldering, meeting people well, like that. Yeah. Here, I guess it's maybe parties well, through work. No, but that's why having hobbies, like for me, that's why music was so cool. Cause I was like, oh my God, I made friends just from literally them loving the same thing I've loved. And that's never, I've never experienced that. It could be bouldering for you. It could be my yoga studio. like was literally my happy place because I really love the instructors there because they're really mindful and they some of them became my friends and we go to raves together. It's just like finding like-minded people, but it's harder to find in LA the activities that are actually of substance. 
Um, and mm. to do that, you have to try so many things. Like my boxing gym was that, then my yoga gym. And it's like, yeah, it has to be something you really enjoy. And then you find people who bond over the same thing that you enjoy. Also, maybe something about LA, but I feel like this is everywhere as well, is like you want to put your best foot forward. So you always want to look presentable Ugh. and you always want to seem like you're doing great. And I think being vulnerable is kind of hard here because you want to look yeah. like you're doing amazing. I always wonder, I'm like, am I a chronic oversharer? Because like, you know, there's, especially when a guy, like you want to be mysterious, but I just lay everything out on the table. I'm like, guess what? I just took five Adderall. I just got my tooth pulled out. I was bleeding an hour ago. Um, nice to meet you. Hey, cute boy. Like, I just put everything on the table, and I don't think, well, I okay, there's a balance do. to it, but. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I cannot play the texting game. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm all I, there. I cannot do know? small talk, and I cannot do surface level talk. Like, there's mm -hmm. nothing that kills my soul more than that. Yeah, but it's so hard to be vulnerable, especially, I think, okay, when you grow up or have, like, these experiences where yeah. you feel like you're burdening people. Yes. In any way. Or even, like, as an adult, if you feel like you're burdening people, I think it prevents you from having these, like, deep talks and from, like, yeah. sharing when you're not doing well. In a social scene, it's really weird because another thing that I just had to accept is like some people just genuinely are happier having surface level conversations more. Um, and then and it's, it can be someone who's a really, really good friend. But I just no matter what, will never feel super connected to them. And ultimately, I think that's why. Um, so obviously, but then my sister and I start talking to each other. We're like, are we autistic because we feel, both feel this way? And like, they're chilling, but we're always like, go to a, like there are so many smaller gatherings we'd go to, talk to a ton of people, but still feel like none of these conversations like were meaningful at all. But those people are super happy. They're having a great time. But maybe they're just showing you that they're having no, no, Some maybe of them are genuinely it. happy. I'm sure okay. a lot of them are like empty and, and dead inside, and especially okay. in our industry. Sure. But I also met a lot of people, a lot of friends who have known for a long time and I still love them as people, but they're just, I don't know, but maybe they're getting it somewhere else. I don't know. I think it's good to have friends of different levels as it well. Is. Like you can have friends that you could just go out and party with or not yes. think with and then friends who you're exactly. talking to when you're not feeling well or when yeah. you're not feeling well. Yeah, no, I agree. I think once you have built out that circle more, it's easier to accept the others. Yeah, but the things aren't perfect. Especially when, oh, I think part of the reason you're lonely when you're younger is because you move around a lot. Like when you're moving around a lot or really focused on work or like always going different places, it's hard to maintain yeah. friendships. Like even if you're cycling back to the same place, like texting someone when they're far away is yes. not easy. Well, you mean this is not being younger, you mean older. Well, Did you say younger or older? I'm assuming like you moved a lot as a 20, kid. 20, 23. Okay, okay. Yeah, I thought you meant like you're a six-year-old kid. Yeah. yeah, I mean, settling in a city. <laughs> this is like, it's funny because these are general adulting things that like, I never talk about, but it's so relevant and might sound so basic, but sometimes just saying it out loud makes you accept it more. But like settling in a city and finding a new city as a woman in your 20s is really hard and it takes a lot of work and your entire life, I mean, even if you move around, but you've had like the same rotating circle about people and now it's just up to you and yourself to go find those people in a completely foreign environment. No, for sure. And all these TV shows make it look so easy and fun. They're like, you have I this think, group of friends that yeah. live their best Which, life in the city. That's totally what social media does. Like, LA was so romanticized for me. And I just remember, like, my favorite artist growing up was The Weeknd. And I loved, like, me from a music perspective, like, the... Ha it's called, like, haunted strip club music. What? But genuinely, it's also, like, okay, he has a lot, he's a really talented producer, has a lot of elements. Oh, like, sexy but, like, but mysterious. Sexy music. Okay, yeah, and I see it. I see from it. when I was really young, I, and I also just think I like darker music and whatnot for other reasons, but I was always a really gravitated towards that type of music. And, bef and like, when I started partying, I would literally just have these songs in my head and, like, have, like, such an image. And for me, I could tie it literally just to a song. Um, and then I would go out trying to recreate like that experience. Um, and sometimes, I mean, just took me into some very bad environments and very quickly realized, okay, you have to get out of this. This is not good. But I was so much chasing the image that I painted for myself about LA. And I feel like people also do this a lot, obviously. Like content, Instagram is like the most superficial unrealistic portrayment of someone's life because they're always going to, unless, you know, some creators got their way to make it really authentic, but I, everything is going to be edited Everyone's and perfect. Everyone's going to look like they're having fun and with yeah. friends all the and time it's not and like that. living their best life. Yeah, and I feel like that's yeah. a lot what creators do about living in L.A. 
No, for sure, because that's how you get views to some extent. Of course. Like people like to click on content that is yeah. aspirational. Of and course. you spend them with friends and living in LA and hang out with influencers and being important and special and pretty. Yeah. Yeah. And I always again I just I always wonder when people go out of that and what amazes me is seeing so many people in the esports YouTube industry who haven't grown out of it. But honestly, I think I'm just exposed to a bad pool because I think there's a lot of creators who don't do that, but I don't see them as much because they're not in LA. Or maybe, yeah, they're not hanging out and going to the parties exactly. as much. Yeah. But it's still tough to, especially when you don't really know who you are to find your group yeah, and to find what you want to do and where you want to be. Which I think... I mean, you're lucky that you have my sister and I, so we know a lot of good people already, and we can meet, introduce you to those. And otherwise, for us, it took us, like, months and months of randomly meeting people until you run into someone that you really connect with, and they've also been searching for that connection. So obviously having, like, a good group of, or not even a good group, even one person introduce you. Like, if you have someone you really, really trust, usually you're going to get along with the same people they get along. So that's automatically a great hack. And that's also why people obviously come back to joining, I don't want to say content houses, but orgs or maybe in sports, Groups, it's their yes. local club where they go work out. Yeah. No, for sure. And I, but it's a hard hack to say because it's like, find that one good friend. And a lot of people struggle with that, especially when they move places, that one like yes. good friend, yeah. good group to expand off of. And I, I also think up, for sure. experiencing the bad is also important. Mm -hmm. I think you learn a lot about yourself and that's important. So, you know, as much as I want you to, um, enjoy everything about LA. I'm also very curious to see how, what about it is gonna change you or you're gonna learn things from, but you've been, yeah, you've been doing a pretty good job, so. I, I don't know, I've been feeling a little bit naive here a little yeah. bit. How is it, why naive? Well, I definitely don't understand the world and its unspoken rules. I feel like everywhere has unspoken rules. Like what? Like, for example, here, I guess one of them is just like the surface level conversations or like like the networking and the like, yeah. how you dress, how yeah. you present yourself, how you introduce yourself. Yeah, but I don't think that's, I think that's just the LA scene. I think that's just who those people are at certain, but maybe not, but 100%. Yeah. Also, it's like not knowing, I'm kind of going into it not knowing a lot of people or like what they're like in their characters. So I, I automatically like assume the best in people a lot. Yeah. And I feel feel like people here at least are more like internal and they kind of are guarded. People are first. so guarded. Yeah, yeah, which I also, the question my sister and I ask herself is like, are they guarded or are we just always searching for deeper things than they are? I think it obviously depends on the person. I think they are guarded. I have noticed just from being here, people are more That once you get to know places. them, yeah, a hundred, well, I bet that's just because we're all jaded, but. Yeah, I'm sure you have experiences with like people who were not good friends. When people approach you at a party, Obviously, as a girl, like, that's why it's a hack to be hot. Because more people are going to come talk to you. You're yeah. going to feel better about it. Most of the time, they're talking to you for the wrong reason. And it's not going to be great. But at least you get more attention. So you go to a party and, like, that's your way of socializing. And, like, little why everyone has to look so good. And I hate uh -huh. that. So, I mean, there's so many bad things that come from that. Um, yeah. But I feel like one thing that I love about you is that I don't really feel like you hide who you are when you're meeting. Obviously, when you're shy and, you you know, you don't want to overshare squeak is going crazy right now but i feel like so far a lot of the connections you've made or not connections friendships you've been pretty authentic to yourself which is like really amazing that that's how you started in la yeah for sure when i think it's good to be authentic when you're first getting to know people it's just it's hard to kind of maintain that as you're going deeper into a relationship like, it's great because then the people who don't like you, you don't have to waste time with them. Yeah. Um, I Be yourself is like the most overrated, like overused advice of, of all time. Um, Wait, are you saying yeah. it's easier to meet people or it's easier? But is it harder to go deep with one person? Yeah. Or is it harder to, okay, that's, be yeah. Be yourself. Like, it's easy just to be uh, like, this is who I am. Yeah, it's easy to meet a lot of people because yeah. it's fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm quirky. And, I do this. Yeah, like, like when I you know. When get to the deeper, like, harder parts of it. Yeah. Like, actually showing maybe the not so good sides. Yeah, that's know? that's what I find really difficult with dating because so much like the beginning stage of meeting someone is so fun. But then when you've lived through all of the dopamine part of it, we just talked about this. Yeah. Then it's like, you're actually just, it's what you like to talk about and what mm -hmm. interests you have and comes down to who you are as a person. And then it's the hardest moment to be like, oh, am I actually, like, do I actually match energies with this person? So 
Recently, my sister and I's house, new house PA who helps us clean stuff, she's hilarious, she's super chill, and she does stand-up comedy on her free time. And obviously she's, you know, a struggling comedian and like taking up all the gigs and probably is not making literally any money at all and it's rough and she doesn't do social media so she's also trying to do it the traditional way. And um, she used to tell me some of her jokes and I thought they were so funny. Like, cause when we first hired her, it was because we needed a, ba a bird sitter for Squeak and we found her on TaskRabbit. She has like mm. this one joke and it's like, my boss is always shitting on me because he's a bird. Or like, that's not the execution. No, no, I get it. I get it. It's really good. <laughs> and she had another really good line. And she's like, life is like chess. I don't know shit about it. Which is so funny because she's had to do so much random chess. And just imagine being a random person who these girls bring you into their weird ass house. And they have a bird and they play chess. Oh and you're like, God. is this real? And she would tell me her stand up. And I would literally like tell everyone about it. I was like, she's so funny. Which also, I've been asking her to invite me to her. She's doing a roast tonight at nine. But, oh. Uh, but oh, we'll talk about that later. Um, and then I would tell my normie friends about it who I just met. And they're cooler and whatever and they'd be like you ever just think like I don't think they're really funny I think they're just funny to you and I feel like that's a lot of the things I get distracted with in content well maybe just squeak. it's just like yeah what's just funny to you versus yeah. funny in general yeah I've definitely had that where I've made like passion projects yeah and stuff, I get like, so passionate about something and no one gives a shit oh, talking oh my god like I am horrible about just talking about something and then their eyes glaze over and I'm like this is so uh, interesting to me like how are you not interested in what's this? something you rant a lot about or it's something yes. you really love oh god yeah it's yeah. honestly the hardest like no again lie. this is not a bit this is real which it's is so it's funny bad. And I like, I even, I, I was like seeing like a chess man, like a professional chess yeah. man once. And he said, I talk so much about chess, it turned him off. That's so funny. A professional like, chess person. I, when I, like most grandma, well, I guess I only really know the sociable ones, but like they love chess and they played a lot, but they're they not. They don't like talking about it. Yeah, they don't like talking about it. Yeah. But I think you just, you probably have a, they're probably, it's, it's hard for you to find someone to talk about chess with because the regular demographic is not like, you know, you check a lot of boxes. Like, you're a cute girl, you're good with people, you have a kind heart. You honestly check all the boxes. And most people get into chess, I think they're a little more antisocial. Like, you know, so... I do not check the box for normies. I do not. I don't I'm know how. To, like, I'm, I'm too well, upfront. Like, I don't play the game. I, I am not yeah, a chase. Yeah, but... Nor if I you'd like get, someone, I'll just, like, go for it. You'd get the normie, and then you'd be like, oh, great, like, I'm yeah, not enjoying my time here. with this person. It's not worth it. I bite. You know? Yeah, I mean... Again, this comes to why my sister and I think we're single, because we're like, well, it's hard to meet someone who's attractive. Okay, I'm not trying to toot our own horn, but someone who's attractive, successful, has a great personality, has a kind heart, and is weird enough to talk about with things. Oh, that was a car. I didn't know what that was. It's weird <laughs> enough to talk about with thing about random topics like. And I think mm -hmm. this is in the past why like a lot of my close girlfriends who have these similar similarities were attracted to like full on psychopaths who are like super autistic, super duper intelligent, but then actually psycho in the end. And like, and then, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, mm -hmm. is it hard to find, I don't want to say normal guy, but a non extreme on the spectrum man that you could be attracted to is also interesting to talk to. Yeah, maybe it's hard, but you, maybe you could find someone who's like all that without the psychopath part. You know? I just don't believe that's there, but oh, you know, maybe okay. it'll come across. Well, we're still young and we're still like learning about who we like, and maybe our t I've heard types change over time. Like maybe that's we'll true. Be attracted to like normal, nice people, right? I don't think that's ever gonna happen, but yeah, yeah. I do feel like it's harder to find weird, good-looking guys in LA than it is girls. Like I feel like. But maybe that's just because we have the internet and we kind of find ourselves. But I feel like there's more interesting girls to talk to who are also checking all the boxes rather than guys. People say they like weird girls until they actually have a weird girl. That's exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's the ultimate struggle. Like everyone's like, oh, I, I'd like that. And then they actually have it and they're like, no. Does that happen? I mean, the only way this has really happened to me is like in dating. But how, where did you feel this? Well, I felt it in friends and in dating, like... I don't know, you're fun and you're quirky until you actually have the, the problems what that come with being fun and quirky. friendships? Like, t how would that come across in a friendship? Well, okay, like, when it, this happens so much, but I, like, had friends in college that I first met that were, mm -hmm. like, based around partying and going out. And yeah, people. of course. And then, like, they, they thought it was, like, fun to introduce me as the girl who does X. Oh. Like, not... Yeah, like, <laughs> I get it, I get like, it. the girl who does chess or the girl who yeah. does, like, Yeah, oh, God. Or, like, 
And then when I actually like would have issues or be like, I'm having they're, trouble relating to people or I'm tra- having not trouble reading signals or. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those were not real friends. That was it ultimately. Yeah. But I still like, I still feel very weird telling people when I'm struggling with things. Uh, well, know. hopefully, I mean, me and Alex, but yeah, I th- like, I hope we can be someone you can open up to, but I very much relate to that because most people just. Unless they're real friends, they don't care about that. But you should know that you can always talk to me and Alex about that this off podcast. No, but I know. But I know. in general, yeah. But it, yeah, it's just hard to... And also, I feel like there's a certain amount of friend like time you have to be friends with someone before you're like willing to say that stuff. Or they want to yeah. hear it. Yeah, I think that's... But And also, obviously, it's easier. I, I have those friends. Like, for example, Dina is one of those friends and my best friend from home. And the hardest thing is like, oh, I really love talking to them. They make me feel better. But sometimes it's just effort because sometimes they're long distance. And it's like mm-hmm. you have to schedule FaceTime calls, which literally reminds me I'm supposed to FaceTime Dina tonight, which I'm going to do after this podcast. Um, and it, they're not easy to find. Like, sometimes you have to go out of your way to reconnect and talk about those things. But when you do have people you can trust with that, like, hold them closely and dearly and try not to lose them or try not to lose that part of your relationship. Did you ever have like a bad friendship? Mm, um, so I would say not bad, but I realized in LA people that I thought were going to be my really close friends and would call me a close friend weren't really a close friend. Like, and it was, it was rare that it would happen, but sometimes I would bond a lot because I'm like, we're in the same industry and we're both younger and girls and doing this surely like we're gonna be bffs because there's so few of us and i'd always be there for them and they'd only want to talk about certain topics but it would never feel where they're asking actually asking me questions about myself and i'm just asking them questions okay so like super one-sided yes yes so i would say that's the hardest which is why i've always lived with my sister because then i just never had to deal with that but yeah I feel like that's a part of my life that I'm really happy that I only had experience in high school. Um, mean girls? Yeah, mean Wait, girls. mean girls in LA, what do you mean? Yeah, that's why I just, I don't go out. And like, <laughs> I see them looking at me and I feel bad about myself and that's about it. It doesn't happen that often. But I feel like that's probably something that happens commonly like in college. And then, well, again, maybe it just comes because our life has been more isolated and it's hard to actually have colleagues you have in common who can mis- mistreat you. Um, the hardest thing I think is that it's not always, it's never like black and white. It's never yeah. like, there's a mean girl, I am the victim. Yeah. Like, it's usually like you do something wrong and then, yeah. you know, instead of being there and telling you about it, they'd like talk behind your back. And, but then you're like, okay, is it my fault? Which yeah. partially it is. Yep. And this yeah. is, it's funny because like, this is the one thing about Alex and I's relationship that we're always so grateful because we can never be petty because we've lived with each other for now four years. We have the same job. We're sisters um, and we practically like live the same life and you just get to see it through a different lens and you can never hold things up because when like we blow up on each other, like we have so much on the line. We always have to be there for each other. We always have to communicate and I'm so grateful for that Um, and even that we've gotten better at and still needs a lot of work but like we're so aware of it because we're always rooting for each other and I've never had experience someone who's like at the end of the day not for your best interests and that's just something like I'm so grateful for but it's it's really not the norm for people no and it's so nice to have like that I know it's so hard to have a sister and work with them I have a sister yeah I don't work with her but I do know that it's like easy to get in fights but just having someone who you're 100 percent yeah secure having a partner through life for you yeah. yeah which ultimately like best friends lovers I mean it's obviously way harder when it's a lover um yeah. uh, your sister's yeah. stuck with you you know yeah yeah and now you're stuck with us yeah sure uh-huh you are i I honestly, I, I like it here. Like, I wonder how long, if you lived with us, how long do you think you'd live with us? Well, if, you know, it's time to put you to the friend for? quiz. Well, I, I'm always like, I don't like to get too excited because I always get too excited. But like, Jules is literally the most perfect roommate ever. And I would love if we all sometimes. live together. Yeah, yeah, uh, so are we. Eh, that's the one thing I'd say. Like, yeah. one of us needs to be cleaner and I'm we're both clean messy. I'm public spaces. I'm not mm-hmm. clean in my own spaces, which is not great. But that's fine. Okay, what do you think your pros and cons are as a roommate? Uh, I think my pros are I'm really good at understanding when people need space and when they want to hang out. Which is great. And, like, I don't mind taking space for myself. Like, I'm okay, like, not being with people all the time. Yeah. 
Uh, my cons are sometimes I oh I don't pick up on small things cues facial expressions. Interesting. Like, I'm I, like you're so yeah. hyper aware of that stuff. Mm, no, I, I'm like trying to be careful, but especially when I get comfortable, like if yeah. someone's upset about someone and giving me like small clues, I will oh. never pick up on it. Like that's like, uh, I do see this. Yeah, and I'll be like yeah. yeah oh I'd be happy to. Gotcha. But like, gotcha. I, I've definitely had roommate. Well, I've been with a bunch more roommates than you have. How many roommates have you had? Like four. So like really? college dorms? College, um, and then after college summers, like when you're in internships and stuff, you have to get a roommate over the summer. Cool. And it usually goes really well, but definitely one thing I've experienced is I always have to tell them, like, tell me straight up what I'm doing wrong. I will never yeah. get mad. But if you yeah. give me hints, I, I will not pick up on it and you'll just think I'm an asshole. Yeah, that makes sense. What's yours? Um, I'm really loud. The one thing <laughs> that I was so worried, I, like, because if I were you, I would hate it. Like, first, her bedroom is next to Squeak's floor. And if one of us wakes up before the waking hours of the others and he sees you, he is a fire alarm without a battery and he will squeak, squeak. And he doesn't stop unless you hang out with him. And sometimes I need to run to the gym really early. I need to go grab a snack and leave. And I don't have time to bring him, so I leave him there. So number one, like, I'm like, how the hell is she sleeping through this squeaking parrot right next to her bird, next to her room? And, like, Alex, noise is the one thing that we always argue. Because I used to, like, to DJ late at night. And, okay, now I've just accepted my fate. Um, so I'd say noise is definitely probably the first thing. I have noise-canceling headphones, and I wear them all the but time. But they can't be that powerful. Sleep. There's no way. I mean, like, I wear them when I'm asleep and I don't get woken up. I sleep with so. earplugs every night, but doesn't the headphones get in the way of things? No, like, I've learned how to sleep with them. That's like, I look insane. so stupid. Like, I, if I ever move in with someone and they sleep so with me, funny. it's so funny. But I love it, though. No, when I, the first thing I came home to Jules, so I was traveling and Jules first moved in. I'm not going to say moved in, but came and stayed with us when I was gone. Because my sister also, we were talking about this for a long time, that Jules would be a great roommate. And finally, timing worked out. She didn't want to be alone. It was perfect. And I came home from Europe to like the first time Jules was living with us. And and I see like her coming out of her bedroom with her giant noise canceling headphones. Oh and God, no. me and Alex, I think are like mid argument or like literally like talking like about the most fucked up shit. And I'm like, oh, like, sh like stop, like Jules, let's not scare Jules. She's like, no, no, she's got noise canceling headphones. Like it's she's immune. And we just continue with our conversation. And I was like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> like, I love it. It's awesome. Cause you can like be in the space without being in their space. Oh yeah. I think no, they're a like, great hack. It makes me so uncomfortable to eavesdrop on people. I don't yeah. like that. So no, it's so like nice. Headphones, yeah, people, like, exactly. Be in the space and make food and not like yeah no that's really nice too much space. more people need to walk around the noise canceling oh headphones God. sometimes look like complete mm. weirdos it was so funny though i was like i remember i saw a tiktok of it when you were like a young kid and i was like it's just interesting like the only time i've seen someone wear those is during a chess boxing fight um and i didn't know people use them unironically but I actually think I would benefit from one so much. It helps. So maybe you see me world. walking around. And I always have my headphones on. I, I honestly like when I go in public, I always put on my headphones even if I don't have something playing, but they don't cancel out. But yeah, I guess I do that. It's good when they do cancel out. Yeah. I think why I haven't been like super like answering you about the roommate thing is I it's partially like I don't want to get too excited until you guys hang out with me more and like realize if you like me or not, which sounds weird. No, that's fair. But like, so you don't yeah. think we know you fully yet? I think you know me as a roommate and yes. you know me as a friend. But not but deeply I as a person. You, like, not, not even that. I want just to give you time to like spend time with me and make sure that like you actually want this, you know? Like just time to see everything. That makes sense. No, I mean, that's fair. I might also feel like I mean, I don't, I'm just wondering, like, what other sides there could, like, I think maybe just emotionally, No, I'm but I feel like you're so, we're both so open about that stuff. It's less, it's less there's sides you haven't seen, but I want you yeah. to, like, have more time to, like, you know, when you're going through a yeah. stress, do you even want someone? I, I already know that, yes, I already know the answer to all those questions, 100%. Like, I, when I like someone, okay, I guess with boys, this never goes right, but, like, <laughs> from, like, this perspective, like, when I know, I know. It's so funny, because I feel like when it's, I like, falling in love, like, I know when it's the one, and I, we found the one, and I sound so silly saying that, but, like, I know myself, and I've had roommates, and, like, unless you have, like, a crazy, like, binge drinking problem or something that we haven't seen from yeah. you, I'm, like, it'd be the perfect roommate. Yeah. And it's just so exciting. And I just worry that our house is too scuffed for you, but what you're so you easygoing. I literally, like, I am in the beginning of my life. I will live anywhere. Like, I'm happy. Well, we're, we will take it. I think the only thing we'll have to figure out is when our parents come. But we can yeah. always move. But I'm very happy for you to join the Botez yeah, clan. It would, it would be a lot of fun. I think, yeah, any hesitancy comes from, like, 
like when I was younger, I think yeah. I would like find a friend. Yeah. And then like they would figure out like me and then not want to be friends anymore. So I always like to give people yeah. a lot of time before anything committal. Yeah, I just feel like we're yeah. both I just feel like we're both pretty open books. That's true. So I just feel like I like even in when there are down periods, sure that's different, but I feel like genuinely like I have a good sense for like who someone is. And yeah. Well, yeah, but that's we'll see. true. I think it'll be a lot of fun, and it's always good to make new friends. And sometimes you have to leap into things I know without yeah. like knowing all the information. Yeah, that's the scary part. It is the scary part. It's about like yeah. friendships. We've been talking about like being alone. We're like, yeah. So you have to sometimes just like go for things. No, I mean, genuinely, my sister and I have been talking about getting a roommate for two years, <laughs> and it's so sad because there are so many friends I found who were supposed to be a roommate, and then long term, I actually I was just telling my sister I was like. I was really sad because I don't like living alone um, and I really wanted those roommates to work out. But now I'm actually happy they didn't because I genuinely don't think they would have been a more perfect roommate. But okay. Aww, that's so sweet. It's like I literally told my sister, I was like, it's perfect. Because, yeah, yeah. Um, that makes me so happy because I'm always afraid I mess. Like this is an insecurity of mine for whatever. I'm always afraid I mess things up. I don't know. I, I'm assuming this comes from deep childhood trauma. Because, like, I see you for the person you are, and I don't think there's any traits of you that I'd be like, okay, that's a bad trait that is, like, yeah, intentional. No, it's it comes from what I told you about not getting yeah. small expressions. And yeah, like, that if makes someone's, sense. Like, I've had to learn some of them, but still, like, if someone was giving me a clue when I was younger to, like, yeah. do something or not do something, I'd never pick up on it. And they yeah. think I was being rude, and then they wouldn't want to tell me, and then... Damn. It would like circle so it's never anything that like is like horrible secret or anything. i know it's more I, just, like, yeah i also feel like that would be yeah. yeah apparent by now no yeah i don't have any big problems except for like singing to your bird that's what i'm i mean yeah, that's also bird. a perfect sign of a roommate she <laughs> loves squeak just as much like yeah, I, love I knew bird. jules was the one when i was in europe and she's like you want a squeak update sure and she sends me one um Picasso, not Picasso, uh, Michelangelo painting photoshopped oh of Squeak. He's and then cool. another Great Gatsby meme. I'm like, yep, she's the one. She's the one. She's already making memes with our bird. He's yeah. Like, such a nice I'm more boy. just concerned if we're going to make you weirder. Not weirder, but like hold you back from success because what? Alex and I are so bad at... Um, Oh, no, you know what? No, no, no. no we're I'm good and we're weird. Friend. I like our weirdness. I no, I never want to change that. I'm happy the way we are. You know when I realized that you would be like a good friend? Hmm. It, it would like... We've got along during yeah. the chess camp. Yeah. But I remember, like, I was so excited to do this piece of content with, yeah. a, a, like, a organization that came. And yeah. then they ended up not being able to do it. And yeah. it was late at night, and you wanted to go to bed and do your yeah. thing. You're like, you wanted to hang out. And you were like, no, let's do this. I was like, oh, we really don't have to. It's I know. Like, no, let's do this. Um, Aw, that makes me... No, I remember. Yeah. And I... Because I could tell from the beginning, I was like... From the conversations I had with a lot of the girls, and some of them are already my close friends, but I was like... This is a new person that I've known of in the world of chess, which is so funny because my first impression of you was when I think you were interviewing us. You were writing something yeah, about chess, back in the, and you were back so professional. Day. And I was like, because okay, like, like who's this pretty blonde girl who's doing? I was like, she's too perfect to be real. And like, I was, in t I thought you were like really classy and professional. Oh my God. And when I got job. to know, it, you know, it was because we met her when she was in college in a corporate setting, and we we're creators. And I was, like, intimidated. And then when I actually got to know you as a person, no I was like, oh, like, I could tell right away. I was like, this is a friend I would value in the long term. And even that right away, I was like, I was so excited. Like, also, I think there's so many things that make us compatible. And one of them is that, like, creatively, we actually do see eye to eye and want a lot of the same things. And when I heard you talking about what you wanted to do, like, I was so excited for you to do it. I really wanted you to do it. Because mm -hmm. I was like, I, number one, know you'll succeed in this. Number two, am also passionate about it. So it was really exciting for me. Because I was like, this is such a rare connection. It's not even about, like, the content thing. I think it's more that it's very... It's hard for people to sacrifice when there's nothing in it for themselves. Exactly, yeah. And when you see someone do it, which there yeah. wasn't anything in it for you, really, besides just, like, maybe having fun with it. But yeah, no. Like, you but were willing to sacrifice time with the girls. That's sweet. And all yeah, that. but that's because, yeah, you genuinely care for that person. Yeah, I feel like that's just genuinely caring for Not someone. Not people do that. Yeah, I agree. No, I, I, like, something so small, and it's, like, coming from a super European household of immigrants, manners were, like, ingrained in us like you always mm -hmm. greet someone when someone comes in your house you offer them water you ask and yes. and when you do that mm -hmm. in LA someone's like you're such a mother like you've got such a motherly nature like oh you offered me food and you're I've getting food that. too but people just don't do that here and it's the most triggering thing 
Yeah, that's true. It's like it, and people definitely... just don't have common decency. I genuinely think that. Yeah, and like sometimes it's average hard. person. I don't does even not. know if it's common decency because like some of it's just stuff you learn when you're younger, and yeah. like if you don't learn it, it's hard to learn it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I definitely was raised that way too. Adult. Of like like being polite, like yeah. being there. Um, no, exactly. Showing up. It also makes sense that you're if you have a strong sense of self, you tend to do well in content because yes. it comes across your big personality. Yeah. But yeah. you're also me, me, me focused all day. And exactly. that's what makes you successful. Yes. But it's hard to turn that off and like be like, okay, there are other people in the world. Like, yeah. you know. Which another thing that I found interesting and like my sister and I went to Burning Man and like do all these extreme things because we love meeting people who are trying to work on themselves. Sure. And I, especially, maybe this is just guys, maybe not, I don't know if girls, <laughs> honestly, yeah, I'm always complaining about guys, but I'm trying to think, I mean, I don't know, because I don't know if girls do this more, um, but I'm always shocked when, like, I meet a guy and they just don't really have anything that they're working on about themselves, and it's Passions. something that doesn't even cross their mind, like, I'll ask, because I'll ask them their questions on the first date, be like, so, what do you have in your life that you're unhappy, and what do you want to change, and what are you doing about it? And I ask them all these deep questions, and most of them have things they're unhappy about, but they're just like, yeah, it's just the way it is. They're like, my leg routine. Yeah. <laughs> my arms. Yeah. And, like, when you find someone who's, like, actually trying to change something about themselves, I think that's, like, the most attractive thing ever. Yes, like, if they can take feedback and they yeah. want to get better. But they have like, to actually yeah. be seeking for it. It's so hard to find people even... Yeah. want to have an ear open for that i think girls definitely do it more but maybe yeah that's i think just our bias because we have those friendships with exactly girls more, so we hear about it more maybe yeah. like a guy who's trying to date you doesn't want to be like oh this is what's wrong with me yeah yeah but at some point you pass a certain stage and you're like okay now it's time to put all of your weaknesses on the table like show i've me, done and they don't do everything. that and i want them to do that mm. yeah 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 i don't know maybe you just are meeting the wrong people yeah no i mean for when we were at Burning Man, like everyone there was like so self aware and like also just so vulnerable up front. Vulnerability, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It's easier to connect with people when they're vulnerable, but it's also scarier to be vulnerable. It's like a weird catch twenty two where you don't bond unless you're vulnerable. Yeah. And you don't feel like you want to be vulnerable unless you bond. Yeah, exactly. What you gonna do? Yeah. I also wonder if certain people just have less to be vulnerable about. But maybe I just mm-hmm. haven't broken down their walls yet. I think everyone's insecure about something. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Case. Yeah. No, I just... Okay, is there anyone you've built a close... Okay, again, romantically. Um, who you really liked, mm-hmm. but maybe they've never even really shared anything like, oh, I don't like this about myself. Like, to me, that's breaking down a wall. And are you supposed to try to push to break down that wall? I've had Or you let them be? I've had experiences like that, but usually when it's like that, it's because they don't want to share because of, like, childhood stuff for them or something. Or, like, you know, it's not that they don't have it. It's that they just don't feel comfortable sharing it with people. So they wouldn't feel good talking about it. Yeah, they don't know how to or they don't want to. But I've never met someone who, like, genuinely, that I've at least been interested in, that, like, genuinely doesn't have anything about themselves they'd like to work on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I think they all have little things, but maybe they just talk about it less. Ugh, I wish people would talk about it more. I wish people would be more vulnerable, but I also know that it's scary to be vulnerable around people you don't know. Which is why I love podcasts, because I feel like they're the most humanizing content that makes you feel like you're not alone. And it's so easy when you get in that cycle to feel... And, like, genuinely, like, podcasts are my main comfort content, especially when it's someone you really look up to as well. Like, oh, they feel this way too. And, you know. What's your period of most intense loneliness? Ending on a Ooh. vulnerable note. Um... Definitely, I spoke to this a little bit, but um, when I had to live alone for a long time and before I had a couple of content roommates, then I had my sister. Um, I also had a lot of PTSD from someone following me, so I would have panic attacks all the time. If I'd hear, like I'd have reoccurring nightmares during the night that someone's going to come in and kill me and wow. I'd have the same reoccurring dream how I would escape certain situations. So I had really bad paranoia. Um, but aside from that, it was like, you know, you live in this big house. It is spooky at night. Like you don't like being here alone. So maybe it was honestly more just my paranoia. Um, and I'm trying to even think what I, I had one friend who really helped me and they made me realize that like, I don't really give myself time to get to know me as a person. Cause I've revolved so much of my life around like, you know, people are, like my sister or our content or my work, like I didn't actually really know myself. I still don't think I do. Um, 
And that was the scariest part about it because when you realize, oh, you have no one but yourself, what are you going to do? Which I don't have the solution mm -hmm. to that. Um, but at least getting aware of it and being like, this is something I want to work on was probably the biggest, I'd say, learning lesson of this year. That makes a lot of sense. And I, I think that's you. a very, like, common experience. Yeah. And people don't talk about Getting a lot. to yourself is scary. Who, like, who are you yeah. beyond people? Like, a yeah, lot of people exactly. surround themselves with things yes. and excitement and people because they don't want to get to know them. Yes. I've had similar experiences, like, I think after that rough breakup, yeah. when I was kind of alone and I, I didn't have the guy yeah, I was with. Yeah, of course. I didn't have the There's your comfort person. I'd moved to their yes. city, so I didn't know anyone. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's really hard. Yeah, and I, it was just me, and I was also feeling sad. Yeah, so I was of like, course. You're also heartbroken. You need someone there for you as well. It's harder when you're sad as well. Yeah, and I, every, I, all my friends were long distance because I, I didn't know anyone in that city. And I was like, I don't feel comfortable like having my friendships just be me, like, talking about all the things wrong with my life. Yeah. So I felt like I had to internalize a lot of it. And then I started almost like losing myself, just trying to get through day to day. And it, it was really tough. L yeah. Yeah. And what did you do to get out. through that? I, I met a friend who was helpful for yeah. sure. Um, but when it comes to things I did, I just tried to force myself to get out. Like I went to uh, a butterfly museum, even though like it's not something I would so you force yourself to do things, force myself to do things. Yeah. I tried to get to know me. I like, started looking into to spiritual Which, sides of, of course, myself. that stuff is really fun and gen I would yeah. love to do a spiritual episode oh, at some I point. I would love that. Because I have so much on that topic too. It's so interesting. And it's cool to get to know yourself, but also, it, yeah. And scary. Cool and scary. I, and hard. Very it's hard. hard. And yeah. I spent my whole life, I think, especially when I was growing up, I would constantly look up like how to make friends, how to be Aww. popular, how to... How to like be normal? Yeah. How to be quieter? Was yeah. Normal. We were always yeah. trying to change things about yourself. Always. And yeah. Trying to like be someone else, and I feel like I grew up, and part of me internalized that. Yeah. Where I just sort of started chameleoning, chameleoning. Yeah, trying to fit in with the rest. Interesting. And even now, sometimes I'm like, which parts are me? Which parts are what I've learned? Yeah, and which do you think there's still parts of you that you're doing for other people, not for yourself? Yeah, and I can notice it sometimes when I'm with like certain groups, I get really tired. I get yeah, really tired. you. Oh my god, yeah. That was the biggest signal for my sister and I. Is like you go somewhere, you just feel socially exhausted. Like you feel like you're working, and that's when you realize you're putting on an act and you're not being yourself. Yeah, and sometimes I can't even notice when I'm doing it, which is the scariest part. Yeah, and I don't even think I need to be doing it either, and I. It's hard to figure out why. I don't do it around it, like small groups. Yeah, I think it depends on the situation, because then it's just like uh, you just accept awkward uh, awkward silence but like a lower standard for yourself not yourself but maybe your company and your interactions and yeah. your definition of a good time or maybe that's me projecting no no i can feel that for sure yeah at, at times it's definitely and you just feel like you need to like be alone and recharge and it, i feel like Ooh. real friends shouldn't be like that as and much. what activities do you do for yourself that help you recharge obviously there's like you know working out and the baby yeah. but maybe something that's not like super well, actually, it could be anything. Passion, no studying chess. Um, I like to actually sing and play piano, even though I'm terrible. You haven't. I haven't seen you play my piano. Because I don't like doing it in front of people. I'm so. Oh, bad I'm the at same. It. I'm the same. So I used bad. to love to play, but I'm like, I love to sing. I can't mm -hmm. sing. I'm so tone deaf, and there's nothing I love more than singing. Same. And I used to always play that piano in our old house, and, and I remember then my roommates was like, they told me after like three months, they're like, I hear you singing in the shower every night, I and it. it was so. I was so. But they're also the ones who are like, you should do music. But they're like, it's good. It's cute. I was so embarrassed. No, it's so having a mu tough. Well, having, well, having a hobby that you're not good at, like, it can be embarrassing. It is. Like, if you like it doing is. something in your Yeah, you need a safe space for that. Um, but, no, that was the one thing I liked about being alone in my house was that I would play the piano and sing. So um, nice. But then I would get panic attacks and get really scared that I'm going to die. So it didn't last very long. But that was that the part. best part about it, which, I mean, that room is soundproof. But, yeah, you... Yeah. It's still scary to sing and be like in short sides. Which is now Alex people. and I always have earbuds in and headphones, so like we're not gonna judge you. But that's why, mm -hmm. of course, I mean, yeah, we're not there yet. We don't have space, but I want to have a music studio so bad. So like your piano isn't in your office, but okay, it's for another day. No, we'll 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 figure it out. We'll we'll work on it. My music is really healing. Do you play piano? Like sh read sheet music? I um, play chords. And okay, then, and, and so you do it by ear? Yeah. Or how did you learn? I do it by ear. And okay. Uh, yeah. How, and uh, anything that's not chords, I do by ear. So did you teach yourself how to play? I can read music. I'm just not very good at it, so I don't yeah. do it as much. Got um, it. But you taught yourself that. Yeah. 
Cool. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been playing? Or how often would you play? Since I was a little kid. So Aww. I'm not great at it because I, I never I know, like, but it's, formally formally. Yeah, same though. It's really nice to be, like, that's why mm -hmm. it's, speaking of impulsive ADHD things that you buy and don't use, so I did the piano, with the piano, yeah. and I did play it. And the truth is I just honestly didn't have enough free time because I would uh, fill up my free time with things that don't actually fill my cup. Um, but playing piano was one of them that really did and I always wish I would do it more, but I never give myself the leeway time and then I get weird about the space. Um, but it's genuinely something that I brings me so much joy that a hobby I want to get back into too. So maybe we can do it one we day. We should. And, and that's the thing, like bringing back to loneliness is like there's so many tips to let, be less lonely. Yes, yes. And, but sometimes it's just like you have to find things yourself and you're still going to feel lonely. Like I'm not saying this is going to solve it, it doesn't. Yeah. But just like things you can do by yourself that still feel good. Yes, and, like, exactly. And like doing things and yeah. working on yourself. Music is one of those. For sure, for a lot of people and from some more than others, you especially I think are really connected to music. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I mean, that's why, like, even going to a workout, if the music is bad at a workout class, I'm so pissed. Like, if it's 7 a.m. and I have to listen to Cardi B as I'm oh doing, I like, God. I will not, I will dread my entire time there. But my happiest moments is when I go to my yoga class and it's my favorite instructor and she listens to techno. Obviously, I'm, like, I'm very attracted to, like, minded people, but... Oh, I'm so excited to go back because I haven't been able to work out because of these wisdom teeth. Working but out is great. Nothing gives me as much joy as that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Just getting like those small dopamine boosts from yeah. working out and like good, healthy. Yeah. Healthy dopamine. No, yeah. For sure. There's so many things you can do to make yourself feel less alone. But I think the main thing is just like realizing that no matter what people put on the internet, especially in this age range, most people do not have this like group of friends you see on TV. Yeah, group of friends are just, internet famous is so weird because you get famous, well, okay, obviously things like looks help, but also for your personality. And so you have all these friends who love you, but you don't maybe have them in real life. And it's just super common. That'd be a great um, name for a podcast, but it probably exists already. What is it? Internet famous. Internet famous. Oh my god. Yeah. True. Real. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah. I wonder. Well, <laughs> as as we wrap this, like, uh, and you know, who, we don't know where this can go. We don't know what this is gonna be. Maybe just a one thing. But we'll see. it'll be. I'm. I love talking about this stuff because I love connecting with people over things that not only you're passionate about, but like again, you don't hear people talk about because they help. I like making things that help me feel better when I'm searching for it, and yeah. this is something. So I'm very curious to see where this will go and where this will stick. But, you know, maybe you'll get no views, and I won't tie our self-worth to it or anything. It will It'll be, be fine. fine. Yeah. No, you know, in some ways, it's like therapy for us. We just did therapy. And this is like, literally, yeah. I was thinking that. I was like, this should just be called, like, talking to my, like, my therapist. But <laughs> it's so funny. And the therapist is but actually again, like, weak. Yeah, but people like real content, like, my favorite podcast that has been blowing up is The Library Show. And my favorite episode of him was when he brought on his ex-girlfriend, who he hasn't talked to for three years. And they just debriefed everything in the relationship, like what they did right, what they did wrong. She definitely was like a healthier partner during it. And he was like, it was also showed what good communication is like. Crazy. And I was like, my favorite podcast content is like real, authentic interactions that you have with people in your daily life and it's so simple because it's so part of daily life people don't really think about how do you broadcast that um yeah and it's hard to do but i i remember in those periods when i was feeling super low this is kind of the stuff i would listen yeah to exactly especially when you like see all these images and things and you yeah don't love access to people who are being vulnerable with you and you think yeah. you're the only one and you're alone yeah 100 percent. that's when you spiral a little yeah and i always wonder like the hard thing about this and I think it's much easier to work on this in a positive sense for other people when it comes to podcasts but I'm so aware that like on Instagram I portray such a little perfect picture and I hate it because it's the <laughs> death of me and I also compare myself to people and I don't ever I it's hard for me to have a positive relationship with social media and it's like uh but the truth is I'm not gonna ever fix that when it comes to Instagram but I do wish that you could take more responsibility for it in a sense, but it's so hard to accept that yourself. But that's more of a problem as being a creator. So. Yeah, and what does well and what... Yeah, exactly. You always want to look perfect because yeah. you know when you look better, it will do better in the algorithm. And then yeah. 
And yeah. Which, no, I'm, and this to me is such a, there's no um, solution there's to no that. Solution. Like once I start spiraling about that, I like there, it goes nowhere. So I'm not even going to start. That is fair. That's fair. Finish but, my water. Yeah, I think that was good. What do you think? That was very good. Yeah, my wisdom hole is hurting. Okay, fix your wisdom but, hole. Yeah, I'll take more ibuprofen. But this was this was honestly a really nice break from the pain because I'm in so much physical pain right now because um, I got my tooth pulled and I have a dry socket. It's not called wisdom hole. It's called a dry socket, and it's the most. Extreme, and better. The dentist won't answer my phone, but this was a nice escape. And now I'm it's sorry. Kind of, now I have to go back to reality that I'm in pain, but this was a nice escape. And. Um, We'll see where we go for we'll this. We'll see you next week or never. Yes, exactly. Who knows?